The 1980s saw the deployment of a second generation of attack helicopters. The premier example of this new class is the Apache. The Apache was specially designed for combat on the modern battlefield. A new generation of weaponry, advanced sensors, and missile guidance gave the Apache unprecedented long-range firepower. The advantages of second-generation attack helicopters, such as the Apache, became obvious in the battles of the first Gulf War. Its capability to stand off outside the, the capability of the enemy to see us, number one, and number two, engage us, uh, is just phenomenal. In the case of the uh, Ramayo oil field battle, we started our initial engagements at uh, 6,700 meters out. Those forces never knew who was engaging them. And uh, by the time we took out our fifth or sixth uh, T-72 tank, they generally got the idea that that was not a good place to be and they left. At the center of the Apache's weapon systems is the Hellfire missile. The Hellfire is laser-guided rather than wire-guided. Older wire-guided missiles have a maximum range of about two miles due to the length of the wire that can be carried. The Hellfire's range is more than double that thanks to its unique guidance system. A laser designator mounted in the nose fires an invisible beam of intense light at the enemy target. The seeker in the head of the Hellfire zeroes in on the laser light being reflected off the target. This longer range is a critical advantage for attack helicopters. By striking from distances over five miles away, their vulnerability to enemy defenses is significantly reduced. The Hellfire missile, I get ranges out in excess of eight kilometers if I needed. Just like with any kind of a battlefield system, I want to use the weapon that keeps me as far away from the bad guy as possible. And if I can hit him at eight kilometers with my Hellfire, I can stop at eight kilometers. He can't even see me at eight kilometers. In addition to tanks, the Apache is designed to engage a variety of other targets. Under the nose of the helicopter is a 30 millimeter chain gun that can be used against lightly armored vehicles. On the stub wings are unguided rockets for attacking targets with high explosives. Helicopters are large and noisy. To minimize the visibility of the Apache to enemy forces, it was designed to operate at night. The two unusual devices on the nose of the Apache are the pilot's night vision system, or PINVIS, and the target acquisition and designation system, or TADS, used to locate targets and aim its weapons. The majority of the weapon systems are uh, sighted through the TAD system, which is mounted on the nose of the aircraft. Uh, that is basically controlled with the thumb force controller. The Hellfire missiles are sighted uh, through that uh, primarily, either uh, with the laser designator through this aircraft or another aircraft. Both the nose-mounted sensors contain forward-looking infrared sights, or FLIR. The supercooled sensor of the FLIR senses heat. It can detect a few degrees of temperature difference between objects, making it an ideal night sight. Flying an attack helicopter at high speeds and low altitude in a hostile environment is difficult and risky. To make it easier for the crew to handle all their tasks in such a fast-paced environment, special features were built into the Apache. One of the most remarkable of these is the crew's special helmet. This is called the IHADS Integrated Helmet and uh, Display System. It's a rather actually sophisticated and expensive piece of equipment that was developed in uh, concert with the Apache to uh, 
utilize some of the systems on the Apache, uh, mainly the pilot night vision system, uh, the 30 millimeter chain gun cannon, and the pads. Any of these systems can be slaved to the helmet that you can take these systems and where the pilot is looking, make the weapon system and or sensor look. This is the HDU helmet display unit. This is uh, similar to what the Air Force has in the aircraft up on their uh, glare screen. It's, a, it's a, a HUD heads up display unit, except this mounts into our helmet. Roll it down in front of the eye. Uh, we have a crosshair on here that allows us to look in the direction of our target, place the crosshairs on said target, and that's where the rounds uh, should strike. The helmet display unit provides the pilot flight and weapon symbology. This technology allows the pilot to focus on the mission and flying the Apache rather than searching the aircraft for that information. Shoulder launched missiles appeared on the battlefield in the 1970s. These missiles pose a growing threat to combat helicopters. The Apache was designed to minimize its vulnerabilities to these weapons. It is equipped with two engines so that if one is disabled, the aircraft can continue to fly. In addition, its engines are shrouded to reduce their heat signature, making it more difficult for heat-seeking missiles to track them. Electronic sensors warn the crew if radar-directed weapons are being aimed at them so that protection systems can be activated. These features are enhanced by the crew's tactics. Technology and tactics is exactly the combination we use. Uh, the Apache has improved technology as far as low infrared signature. Uh, we have uh, aircraft survivability equipment, ACE equipment on the aircraft, everything from radar jammers to IR jammers, uh, chaff and flare dispensers. Um, we have an APR-39, a radar warning system that allows me or tells me or tells the air crew uh, that somebody is looking at me or somebody is in acquisition or somebody is in track mode. Use all that technology and then you use the tactics of the uh, helicopter and Army helicopters of flying low, staying close to the terrain, using terrain to put the terrain between myself and an enemy force, using speed where appropriate or the opposite of that, using low speed where appropriate. So I don't go blundering into an enemy force. I use low speed, low altitude to find